All right, everybody, thanks, and welcome back to Gearhead Daily. I have Mr. Rob Pitts with us today, and uh, I just want to say, as we get started, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do hit that like button and do all the things you're supposed to do. Uh, but uh, Rob and I were mid-conversation, and we said, why not just film this? Because the conversation is better than, than what we could probably record, so we're just going to pick up where we left off. I'll give everybody the background. Rob is a busy man. He owes me a pool game, by the way. I've been practicing up. I do. Yes, you do. And uh, and I'll, I'll get out there to, to where you're at uh, soon because it's, I, I do travel for work. So hopefully I'll be out there soon. And just get everybody up to speed. You're a busy guy. you got a lot going on. And we were talking, and uh, I was just uh, relaying a story about how my, my, uh, my mom uh, damn near broke her face on Friday. Okay, so here's what happened. She calls me. She says, uh, in, you know, this panicked voice. I just, you know, my, you know, I just talked to her like 20 minutes ago, and then she called me right back. And I'm thinking, oh, this is, this is strange. What's going on? This is not going to be good. No, it's not going to be good, especially since she called me right back, and I'm going, oh, geez. So I pick up the phone, and she's, she's, got, she's really weak, and she's crying and just, you know, just freaking out. And she goes, I need to go to the hospital. Uh, I fell on my face, and it's bleeding. There's blood everywhere. So I jump in my truck and I broke a few laws. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to lie, but I won't say when and where, but I will I give you a pass. Thank you. Um, so my mom's about 25 minutes away. I jump in my truck. Uh, the truck will do a hundred miles an hour. I will say that not, I'm not going to say when and where, but, uh, it will go triple digits. Um, I sure I pissed off a lot of people getting there, but when you hear, uh, your mom is laying, potentially laying in a pool of blood, Laws don't apply. You're going, to, you're going to be in a hurry. I'm in a bit of a hurry. And I said to myself, you know what? Pull me over. Go ahead. I'm fine with that. I'll explain the situation. We'll get there. And I get there, and she's up and walking around. I didn't, I didn't get pulled over. I just, sure pissed a bunch of people off. But I get there, and I can see her through the window, and she's up and walking around. I relax a little bit. No big deal. Walk in. She's, her face is all bloody and a bunch of other things. She fell off a ladder. And... This is the third time she fell off the ladder. So um, we're, you know, concerned about her being on a ladder alone. I think, I think removing the ladders from the house would be the next step. So I asked, after, funny, you mentioned that I take her to the hospital. She's fine. She gets a CAT scan. You know, they, they do an x-ray of her face. She's fine. She gets a bunch of stitches from like the bottom of her nose to, the, to her upper lip. Um, she mentions that she felt like some of her teeth were a tad loose. So I'm like, all right. And she's a very spry lady. She's 62. She, she did like uh, that CrossFit trend, whatever that was, for a couple months. Uh, Her couple mom's months. flipping tractor tires now. Yeah. 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 No, no. This is the lady flipping tractor tires for months in a couple years, three days a week, you know. So I was never really worried. But now suddenly I'm kind of like, you know, yeah. concerned. So there was a nice leisurely drive after I got there and realized everything was, was uh, doing okay. But, but that's, that's kind of what happened. And you were saying you're so dang busy. The only way you get some free time is if uh, a, a, a dang near emergency has to happen. Right. Um, yeah. We're filming nonstop for this spinoff channel. Yeah. Um, and you know, this was the furthest thing from my mind. You know, keep in mind, I did my very first YouTube video, December 26th of 2017. Wow. This is when my first YouTube video dropped, the eBay Outlaw story. And can I say, yeah. j just for just for the record, you've shown me your you, you gave me a preview of it, and um, for those of those of you who are anticipating it, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, this, the 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 thing you got going on uh, is going to go quite well. I hope so, and, and yeah. you know, and, and we we put a lot of work into it. Um, so I've got a film crew that's filming these things for me. I've got two guys that are filming. This yeah. is, we've come a long way, you know, used to, when I thought about YouTube, you know, it's not like, you know, you got a camera on a tripod, like sitting in his place in his chair or, right. Hey guys, this is <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know, what's up, man. Yeah. Hey, check this out. To my crib, yo. Yo, can you see this? You feel like you need to take a Dramamine to watch it. <laughs> and uh, so now the guy that I've got filming my YouTube material films documentaries for Netflix is <laughs> one Sundance film festival awards. This is the guy that like, I really feel like I'm, 
I feel like I'm asking a college professor to teach kindergarten. Right. And like, <laughs> but he's threw some, some tricks into it. And, and mm-hmm. it's, tough. I guess the best way, and you know, I'm kind of known for my little Southern sayings. We have took chicken shit and made chicken salad. Like, no, <laughs> it. Um, yep. he's put the right amount of pickles. It's perfect. Nice. So I, I will, I will say the production value uh, that's expected on YouTube now is pretty high. And uh, th- what you've shown yeah, me, so far- you've got, you got millions of critics. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, billions. I mean, how many people around the world can see it now? I mean, the thing you got to think about, you know, a new blockbuster movie comes out, hell, they can't comment under it. Oh yeah. They have disable the comments. Yeah. 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 But you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We got, Hey, Rob shirts on Rob shirt pockets unbuttoned. <laughs> His beard's a little off. I mean, you talk about giving somebody a damn complex, okay? <laughs> oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I've people have commented about uh, everything from his beard is great and amazing, all the way to w- what a dirt ball, you know? Like exactly. Like, I, I, you, you, you can't. It, speaking of comedians, we were talking about comedians off air, and my one of my favorite comedians is Mitch Hedberg, and he's got the line. You can't please all the people all the time. And last night, all those people were at my show. <laughs> <laughs> I have been there before. Mm-hmm. So you can only do what you you can only do what you want to do. And uh, if other people like it, great. If other people don't like it, I'm probably still going to do it. You know. I approach life with this credo: if you're going to make an omelet, you're going to have to crack a few eggs. Sure. You know what? You can't please them all whatever you know i'm gonna have fun with it and the thing is it's like everybody's got an opinion and i'm not saying your mm-hmm. opinion doesn't count sure you know right you know like you can take that a dollar and a quarter and you'll get a cup of coffee with it you know <laughs> it's funny i had not heard that saying and then i interviewed a guy uh for the my first podcast he said the exact same phrase now i've heard it twice i've never heard that phrase a dollar and a quarter yeah well, I'm, still trying to, I'm still trying to figure out what it means, but we'll, you know, <laughs> I'm sure eventually I'll figure it out. <laughs> well, Google it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So we were also talking about uh, some of the new things you've got going on because you, uh, as everybody knows who is watching this, is a, you, you do, you try, you trade and sell and, and buy and sell cars, basically. Uh, excuse me. Collector cars. Collector cars, right. Okay. So you, you buy and sell and trade those, and that's is, is that your main kind of source of income, or is that just... Uh, no, that's a hobby. Okay. Um, you know, that's something about me that's... Is, I don't have normal hobbies. You know, like normal hobbies like guys that play pool. Or golf. Or guys that, that play softball, or guys yeah. that golf, or, or fantasy football, or something like that. My hobby is making money with my hobby. Okay. Like, I love classic cars. And then I found a way to own the cars that I always wanted. Right. And make a dollar or two along the way. So it's even better. Right. So, that, no, it's not my mainstream of income. Um, oh, okay. It's, it's a, uh, you know, I used to do sales strictly. And, and I loved it. And I miss it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Then I see these starving salesmen out there and then I'm thinking, you know what? It's feeling pretty good on this side too. You know, mm-hmm. it's nice to sell because you want to, not because you have to. Right. Well, you come across differently too, if you're not desperate to sell something. Well, I'm going to tell you something that bleeds over into your sales strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people smell blood in the water and you know, they know when you're struggling. And mm-hmm. I mean, I want to tell you something and I I mean, when I was selling new cars, you know, I was really good at it. You know, I mean, I've always had the gift of gab. I've always had, mm-hmm. you're just a knack of reading people. And I'll be honest with you, nine times out of 10, if you're remotely interested in buying a car, I could be the guy to talk you into it. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, the crowd's off. People aren't coming in, you know, things like that. You know how many times that I wore, you know, a pair of, $200 floor shine shoes with a perfectly starched shirt and slacks and a tie and carrying a $700 Halliburton briefcase. Actually, me and Ed talk about the Halliburton briefcase. <laughs> in a second. 
with my seven hundred dollar nice. Halliburton briefcase mm -hmm. sitting in a four dealership with twenty dollars negative in my account. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It yep. happens. Oh yeah. And, and people don't see that part of sales. All they hear is the stories. So when I tell them, you know, hey, you know, I I mean I get kids. And I say kids, I mean, he's 16, 17, 18. I'm getting to the age where I can call anybody under 30 a kid. <laughs> and, and so, and, and that's the one upside to growing old is I can do that. Yeah. Um, but I get these kids on Instagram and Facebook, you know, and we'll do like the questions, the rabbit Q and a Thursdays. And I love doing yeah. it when I have a chance. And I mean, literally 500 questions, I think it's the maximum you can get. And I hit it like two hours. Wow. And probably 200 of the 500 questions is, hey, Rabbit, I flipped my first car and I only made 200 bucks. Or I made 500 bucks. I'm not good as you. No, 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 no. You did great. We just don't yeah. brag about it. We talk about our home runs. Yeah, those right. are basic. And those, that's what pays the bills in repetition. So you're on the right track. Right. And I explain that to them. You know, the whole oatmeal is better than no meal. Mm-hmm. You got to understand, even if you made just five hundred dollars off a car, you did something that two thirds of America can't do: is mm -hmm. make money from a used car. Because what do yeah. they do? They trade the car in. That's and tough. you know, as I do, if you, if you trade a car in, you've lost money on it. I'm oh yeah. That. And um, no matter how good the deal they told you, they gave you, um, the um, they're buying it to resell it. They're not buying it to help you out. Yep. They're not buying it because they're in love with it. Or my favorite one, no matter what the car was, we had this one guy that worked at the Ford dealership. His favorite thing, no matter what it was, we always had a buyer that bought those. Sure. So, like, you know, if somebody come in in a Celine Mustang, okay, that's a believable story. Someone yeah. comes up in an Escort station wagon. I've got a guy that buys every Escort <laughs> station wagon. Nobody wants the Escort station wagon. Right. So, you know, if, but it's funny you mentioned that because – when I bought my, I bought a pickup truck, brand new. It's my first brand new vehicle ever. Uh, I usually buy them new, but I had, I had my little Malibu with 200,000 miles on it and they were going to give me 1500 bucks for it. And I knew I could probably get 35 for it, you know, on the open market, but the way it worked out and this is, you know, I did my homework and here's the, the, the kicker of it is they said, well, because of the GM discount and the, the loan discount and the trade-in and the fact that you own a, several Chevrolets, you get this X amount of dollars. It, uh, it, we did the math both directions and it turned out to be like a $300 difference. And I said, forget it. You can have the car for 1500 bucks, even though I can get two grand more for it. Uh, it all worked out in the end. And I have a friend who works kind of in the background at, uh, for, for General Motors. And he calls me up and he goes, Hey, Eric, I heard you bought from this, this place. You told me you bought this truck. I said, yeah, I did buy that truck. He goes, would you like to know how much they made off of you? No. And I said, hell yes, I do. Really? True story. And he goes, Eric, they bought your car for $1,500. They took it to auction. Like they said they would. They told me they would. I understand how these things work. And they sold it for $1,500. I said, well, okay, fine. I, I'm, give a crap what happens after it's just a, you know it's a it's a beater malibu he goes but after all is said and done they made negative 22 dollars i kid you not negative 22 dollars off my deal they did it just to move a unit because my truck was one of those leftovers from last year right and so they discounted it to the very bottom and then, but, and then sold me you, you get the thing you got to understand about a new car dealership is there's mm -hmm. so many ways to make money. Yeah. Move you moving units. Exactly. It's a numbers game more yeah, than, for sure. than dollars and cents sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big thing. Um, you also have some dealer holdback stuff. You have mm -hmm. incentives. I mean, they, I want to tell you something. And then especially like if you go through like, you know, Back in back in well back in my day when I was selling cars it was GMA seeing Ford Motor Credit but now it's like Ally or whatever. Yep. You know yep. you go through these certain vendors. The money is made in the financing now. That's okay. the big thing you got to think about. And, uh, and at the end of the day, mortgaging cars is where the money is, not selling the cars. That's just the small stuff. Right. You know, and really, and I've explained this to people before. In a new car dealership, new cars is the least money maker of a dealership. Mm -hmm. Really. Used cars makes way more money than the used car or the new car side does. Sure. And service and every parts and all that, they kill in a new car dealership. New cars, even though that's the centerpiece. Right, right. The bait just to get people in. So you were telling me, just speaking of just volume of cars, 
that you've got a bit of a problem now because uh, y- your hobby is now kind of overrun your, your space. Well, you know, it's like everybody, you know, it's like, you know, the, the whole thing about the, the, the boy with the most toys, <laughs> and I've took that apparently to heart. Um, yeah. It's like right now, and the number fluctuates daily because I've got cars rolling out and cars coming in, and, mm-hmm. and, um, and you know, we, we were joking around about it. I'm running out of room for cars. Yeah. And, you know, when you buy a thirty, forty thousand dollar collector car, you just can't park it outside, so it's got to be inside. And, and you know, these cars are insured and all that stuff, and and things like that. So you're like, you know, you got to have somewhere to put it. Well, I've got this huge shop that I run, and I've got a great area that I can put ten, twelve cars fairly easy, and that's great. Well, now I put it in lifts so I can double stack, <laughs> and I'm still running out of room. Yep. And now I've got a house where I can keep them at. I'm still running out of room. And then I've got cars down at my parents' house at the lake that we're running out of room. And now it's it's becoming, I'm becoming a damn car hoarder. That's the problem. I actually drove. I never get a chance to drive them. Right. And the big reason I don't drive them is they're so aggravating to get out because I have them packed in sometimes. <laughs> um, I bought a 57 Chevrolet 150 Black Widow car. Nice. It's absolutely gorgeous. Nice. Three months ago, I drove yeah. it one time. You know why? Because this ended up at the front of the building. You had to move and it. And all the other cars are parked behind it. <laughs> so I got to move 12 cars to get it out. Yeah. So I'm just going to hell with it. You know, I'll drive this. I actually drove. I went today to go look at a piece of commercial property to bring to, to store some of my car problem. And um, basically a toy box. And I actually, you know, I, I came to my shop and I said, you know what? I'm going to drive some. So I drove my big block C10. It was gorgeous, gorgeous day here. A little cloudy, about 70 degrees outside. Just perfect. And it was just fun just cruising around in that thing and going out and looking at some properties and stuff. And I mean, like, that's what it's supposed to be. And that's the thing I want. I want to be able to get any of them out because I've got all these cars are great running, driving cars. Right. And never get to do anything. You know, never get to drive them because it's so aggravating to get them out. And by the time I get them moved around, I've done burnt my time up that I had to ride around in it. So you're kind of a victim of your own success in a way. You're, you're a little bit, a little bit. I've created this monster. Yeah, you, it's, it, like, it's like you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Ha 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 ha! ha. <laughs> you know, I can just sit and stare at them. <laughs> well, I mean, there there are worse things in life to walk out into a giant. You know, like you said, what five thousand square foot? Uh, oh, gee, you got cars everywhere, and exactly. you got you got a, a fleet of of these cars. So there is worse things. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, I, you, you can, you know, cry into it, a sixty-nine. It's, Camaro. it's a pitiful, it's a pitiful life. You know. <laughs> Speaking of that, I've got yes. a funny one for you. Okay. All right. All right. So my old man, he's getting a little older, okay. and uh, yeah, he he works with me here at the shop about four days a week, and. We always had fun, and my dad, he's he's a trip, I, and I love him to death. I mean, he's like my brother, but right. it's he'll be sitting here. This is my office here at the shop, and we're just killing time, and he'll come sitting in a chair over here on the other side of my desk. He'll flop down, and he's got no <laughs> face. You know, we'll get to talking, and you know, about something, or I'll be busy buying a car or something like that. I mean, that's kind of constantly, like, I work and do invoices and do all the office stuff here and, and all that. And then on the other screen, I'm on, you know, bring a trailer or I'm on, you know, Facebook marketplace or Craigslist looking at cars. Okay. And I, and I bought some very interesting ones for this new channel launch that I normally wouldn't buy, but we're extremely, I've been taking pages from famous YouTubers. Okay. And so I've been out buying in their yard a little bit, playing nice. around. Nice. And, We'll get to that here in a second, but all right. But anyway, dad sits down. He's got his lip ran out, and he's what? What's wrong? Why the long face? He goes, he said, I'm just just down in the dumps, you know. He said, just don't feel good. And it's hot. And it was it was a really hot day outside, and you know, just all. I mean, just talk about just first world problems, right? You know, <laughs> you know. He goes, he goes, you know, this is you know, just just it was just aggravating. I have sitting traffic this morning and all this stuff, and I'm. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've slept four hours in three days. Mm-hmm. I'm still smiling, buying cars, having a great time, you know, remotely cheerful to people. 
You know, I mean, I'm, I'm frying and you're over here, you got 12 hours, you come in at 10, you leave at four, you know, you take two hours for lunch. And, um, you know, it's like I told him, I said, you know, I started thinking about it. I said, you do have it rough. I said, you know, really and truthfully, you do. And you kind of looked up at me, kind of, kind of, you know, kind of half face. And here it comes. Just think about it. <laughs> I said, you have a son, your only child who's extremely talented, <laughs> who runs a multi-million dollar company for you. And super humble. You know, I get it honest. And, uh, <laughs> but I said, you get in your $80,000 Escalade and you drive 45 minutes to your million dollar house on the lake to walk out in your backyard and look over the most scenic lake in the state of South Carolina. But first, you got to look over your big ass pool with a fountain in it <laughs> in the backyard. And I said, once you get to your house, you know, you, you've got to open the garage door because you got to push the button in your overhead console. The hell you live. You push the button on your overhead console. Finger strain. And said, and the, exactly. And then I said, then as soon as you walk, get out of your Escalade with his motorized running boards. And, and, and you shut the door and you take your leather briefcase that has nothing in it because I don't know why, because you never get anything out of it during the day, but you carry it. And you, you walk into your garage and you walk past you know, your 23 foot, you know, Baja big block boat and your 57 Chevrolet Bel Air convertible and your 427 Corvette and your wife's Escalade mm -hmm. of 40 years, the love of your life. And you walk into your beautiful home. I'd blow my fucking brains out. I, don't <laughs> I said, I don't see how you get out of bed. My dad literally just got up. He said, you're an asshole. <laughs> I would. I mean, come on. Don't give me that. Sad. There's somebody that's got a worse story than you. I'm just going to tell you that now. Did it, did like the AC not blow super cold that day? And it's, it is something. I mean, escalator. What got, you, what got your panties in a bunch that bad? Like, really? I mean, I would kill to be in your situation. You know what I mean? And yeah, there's a few people that would. Yeah. He said, "You know, living on lake ain't that great. Boats buzzing around all the time. Oh. No. Oh, how do you stand it? All those people having a good time, water oh. boarding, and and um, you know, with their with their Kitty boats. clad women out on the water. Oh. Oh, it just makes me sick. <laughs> yeah, those those people miserable." laughing and drinking beer just having fun on the lake look at them just look yeah. at them <laughs> it's like I, don't, I, said, I, would, I would just blow my brains i couldn't handle it I was, <laughs> you're a stronger person than i am i don't know if i can handle that or not <laughs> what the hell are you doing here you know like why do you come here oh but that that's that's just like a day in my life that that's, that's pretty good of things i do with that's pretty good. I uh, so I, play, I play therapist sometimes. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, well, you've you've got to. I think, yeah. uh, especially for you know those who are. Uh, there's actually a term for that called the worried well. Yes. And uh, those are often sometimes the best clients to have, just because um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, life is going pretty good, but they just want to get some things off their chest, and you know, and they usually pay in cash. Oh. Well, those guys we like, and then you got some of them that want to pay you, want them to pay you in advance. You know? Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm not sure about this guy. You mind us paying up a little bit? You know? Yeah, right. So, so the uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just uh, hey, when you get a case of the giggles, right? We I were all the time. Yeah. So we were we were chatting again off air about kind of this weird thing this kind of weird phenomenon that has happened uh through VinWiki. you suffer from it more than me so i will i will definitely concede to that but i still get people in my hometown recognizing me and you're saying you're getting people like you know dang near breaking down your door i get people i mean not breaking down my door well, that's an the exaggeration funny, but you know the funny things you get in the mail yeah um, every day, every other day you get, I've gotten hand like crocheted rabbit dolls. 
Was it good? Very spooky looking, by the way. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't done well. Well, they were done well, but it was just creepy looking. They had like red yeah. eyes, and stuff, you know. Right. Um, you know, you get an A for creativity, but <laughs> nonetheless, um, I've gotten. I had a guy. Some of the most crazy things send me a rabbit diecast car, Volkswagen rabbit diecast car. Well, Makes rabbit keys things. Yeah. Or I got a box of rabbit Volkswagen rabbit emblems. Had probably. 50 in the box. Huh. So. D- it, d- was that, was, was Rabbit the name that you gave yourself or did somebody else give that to you? That was given to me when I worked at the new Ford dealership. Okay. By the owner of the Ford dealership. Um, quick story, I sold new Fords. Sure. This was back, this was back 06. Okay. And, and I started out, never sold new cars in my life. And I uh, decided I want to work at a new car dealership and, um, you know, it's straight commission. Okay. It's a, it's a commission job and, and, you know, and there's no steady paycheck in sales like that. Um, I sold nine cars my first day there. Um, nice. The, uh, it was a, it was one of, one of their best sellers. I sold nine cars in one month and it just luck fell my way that day, but you had yeah. to be able to close that deal too. Um, you know, they had the sales board that all dealerships have They have like, yep. You know, the salesman's name and the stock number you sold, the trade and all this stuff. Yep. Well, I was writing Robert so many times on that board oh. that <laughs> it, it was just kind of scribbling it up there. The salesman came in and the salesman, or not salesman, but the owner came in and the owner, George Davenport, he was an ex-boxer, like golden glove guy. Mm-hmm. And he hit so many times in the head. Like he was still a stocky big guy and he was an older guy, but I mean, the, Brain damage, it probably has went on. You know what oh, I'm yeah. saying? Cauliflower ear, the whole shooting yep. match. Just, but he talked with a real slurred speech. He was, I don't know who Punch the drunk, yeah. guy is, but he sells a lot of cars. And it just <laughs> stuck. So next thing you know, in my little glass office, it said, Rob, Rabbit hits. And that was, hey, Rabbit. And now, mm-hmm. to this day, everyone at that Ford dealership, they actually moved. We actually, we actually filmed at the old dealership, walking oh. around and, they didn't tell some funny stories about the dealership, but the uh, even to this day, uh, the owner of that dealership actually lives like one neighborhood over from me. So we always bump into each other at the same convenience store. Okay. And as soon as he walks in, he's like, Rabbit! You know, I mean, it's just like they don't know me as Robert. Um, yeah. But other than that, not many people ever really called me Rabbit till now. And then it's just because it, it was so funny. Like somebody comes up to my dad at the shop. You know, mm-hmm. he's not exactly a Mr. Personality. I mean, me and him have some fun, but he's not hes not really ready for the open crowd yet. Right. And if somebody comes in, he goes, oh, my God, you're Rabbit's dad. He's like, who the hell's Rabbit? <laughs> you know, but, uh, and, uh, you know, he'll come in my office. You got a fan. <laughs> They're taking pictures with me. Hurry up. Oh, yep. They're taking pictures with me. <laughs> Rabbit's but, uh, dad. <laughs> and he loves it. And, and he does. And he has fun with it. And he enjoys it, too, to an extent. But, yeah. uh, but we get a lot of people come by here. Yeah. And they want to see the cars and all that stuff. And, and I love talking. When I have time, I love it. Yeah, I of love course. Or stay there and just tell them about them. And, you know, of course, you get the same questions over and over again. You know, who's the porn star? Yep. Um, in the, with the Camaro vid. And, you know, so that you always get that one. And I always tell them the same response. If I tell you who it is, it's going to ruin that story for you. <laughs> a lot better if you don't know. Right, exactly. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Right. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, man, where'd you get this from? Where'd you get that at? You know what I'm saying? And, and it's always a lot of fun. I love the responses to people in these cars. And, and, and it's so funny that, you know, you can be, the majority of your Vin Wiki guys are exotic car fans. or, or Oh, yep baller fan you know that kind of that kind of bunch yeah. speak you know but it's so funny that a classic car still brings people together like the the dude uh kyle connor the yeah. ev i had him on the radio show right. and i want to come by and see rabbit this dude's driving a car that is basically closest ancestor or closest relatives of damn toaster <laughs> and he wants to come look at muscle cars. Yeah. 
Oh and, yeah, um, you're a busy guy, man. It's this so, is taking like two weeks just to do this, just to get this organized. Yeah. But so this guy came by, and this dude's riding around in a golf cart <laughs> and gets out in his Tesla and uh, wants to come look at my Detroit Speed 69 Camaro or my big block C10 or, you know, my Malibu SS or whatever. And I mean, he's a car guy. And then we had him on the radio and we were having a lot of fun with it. Um, it was a matter of fact, we talked about two hours on the radio, um, yes. you know, and, and, and talking about the record a little bit, but we was talking about, he's really big into EVs and he was telling us about all the new EV stuff that's coming out and mm -hmm. uh, it's really exciting. And uh, it's really neat, you know, and it gives a, a spin on it for the car guys. And, and I told him, he said, what do you think about electric cars? So I look at them like a novelty. Um, I think they're cute, but it's not really my bag, you know. And, um, right. and he goes, and I said, everybody likes their, everybody's got their thing, you know. And, I, and, it, and it's cool, and I understand the instant power and the torque, and I got you. Yep, it's nice. But I, don't know, I, I guess I'm old school, I like fossil fuel, you know. Yep. But, um, and, and he was telling us about all the new, the new Porsche electric that's coming out, the new uh, Jaguar electric. And so then, of course, I had to chime in. I said, you tell me the Jaguar's coming out with an electric car? He said, yeah. He said, it's cool. We hold the I-Pace. And uh, mm -hmm. he was telling us all about that. And I said, I love to step in real quick on that. I said, don't you think we need to, like, get down the gas car first before we start taking on electric ones? <laughs> Jaguar. And he laughed. Yep, and I right. said, you're probably not old enough to remember this, but Jags and wiring was never been a strong suit. Um the British so much, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, as a rule. Yeah. And uh, and he and of course he got a little laugh out of that. But um, <laughs> but you know what? It was a lot of fun. And that's what I love about this hobby is you know, we're all in it for the same reason, is the love affair of the automobile, no matter what it is. For sure. And and you know, some of us like you know, it's a variety. Some of us like electric cars and some of us like Corvettes and some of us like Porsches and some of us like, you know, everything. I love that, you know, even those damn, do y'all have uh, the guys <laughs> with the, the wheels like this? Uh, a few. We, we've got a few stance guys here. Yeah, even those guys. Yeah. I don't even understand them. I'm going to shoot a text this person so they'll quit calling. Yeah, no problem. And we have a few of those guys here and those, uh, doesn't work very well on regular dry street nor does it work very well in the snow because we get uh, i'm not sure if you've had the i don't know if it's a pleasure or displeasure of uh driving in six inches of snow that is uh, covering about two inches of ice on top of it and there is just a, a just a way you drive that is completely different when you're driving on ice that is covered in six inches of snow. And, uh, when you've got your wheels, like, yeah. The, yeah. Well, the, I'm trying to figure out the advantage to this. I don't think there is one. I think it's a, it's a look. I think it's well, a style. Twice the, twice, twice the wear out of your tires. Cause you could take and flip them. Yeah. Where the other end out. But the handling goes to hell. Obviously. I mean, if, I mean, if you saw my Corvette in race trim, I had about three degrees of camber on front and back. And it, it looked, I mean, if you looked at it, you could see it. You could see the, the tilt, but it wasn't, you know. It's the fast five. way to explain to people what I'm doing. Yeah. It's like, I'll take a picture of the screen. <laughs> there you go. I'm busy. Right, exactly. And I, I think when you talked about all the different, so we have some of those folks, but I think when you talk about the variety of the, the car field, it, it, I, I always get a little weirded out or I confused when I hear or I read those articles that say, oh yeah, the car culture is dead. The millennials don't want cars. The, you know, they only want to ride this or they don't want to ride that. But the variety of car people that are out there tells me that maybe certain scenes may be fluctuating up and down but cars in and of themselves are still going pretty damn strong. Yes, they are. Um, there's some that, that, that don't have interest in it. You know, yeah. you hear more about kids not wanting to get their driver's license. Where me and you, it was like a rite of passage, man. I freedom. couldn't wait. I could not wait to get my license. I'm like, mom, I don't want you driving me around. I'm going to go wherever the hell I want now. Yeah. Well, even though you really couldn't technically do that either, but, you felt like you could if you wanted to. Back then, I could. Well, but when I got my license, um, it was uh, uh, you got a full license at sixteen. At sixteen years and one day, you had a full license. Could go. I could drive wherever the hell I wanted. 
and I did. I drove that's out of. That's what South Carolina was. So yeah, yeah. The, uh, and actually, I had a rest- I had actually lucked out because I had a job, and this actually got cut out of my VinWiki video. Okay. I had a driver's license at fifteen. Nice. The thing is, when I was fifteen, I looked like I was eight. <laughs> I was a very baby faced kid. I like I can see that. And the thing that's crazy is, is here I am riding around in a Trans Am, a brand new Trans Am. It looks like a child's driving it down. A tall child is riding it down the road. Yep. And sitting in the car, you don't know I'm tall. But the thing that was crazy was, is I had to have a work permit. Yep. Sure. So I could drive. And I bagged groceries at Winn Dixie <laughs> at a grocery store. Yep. To get a work permit to drive my $30,000 Trans Am, <laughs> making $4.25 an hour. Wow. So I could drive. But it worked out. So. Well, it's, here in Minnesota, we have uh, a farmer's provisional license, uh, and you might have the same thing, but uh, since most of Minnesota is farmland, uh, I think you can get a, I don't know what the exact legal term is, but we call it the, far, the farmer license, which you can get a full on driver's license at, I think, I want to say 12 or 13. That's because, insane. Because, well, so because, scary. It is, but think about it. These 12 and 13 year old kids are also running the combine too. So True. you're going to, you know, what's the difference between driving dad's or mom's truck or the combine, a $300,000 machine, or they're going to run down the street to get some bolts, you know, from, from farmer bill, you know? So I don't know if you guys have, it, but that's what we have down here. We ain't got no combines or anything like that. <laughs> In Greenville, the only thing we grow is potholes. Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's that too. And I, I think it's interesting to, to talk about just how uh, the VinWiki thing has, you know, uh, changed. I, it, it's probably added quite a bit to your life too. It's not as much for me just because I've only been on a few times. Uh, but, you know, I still get recognized from time to time and you're getting inundated, it sounds like. I tell you the funniest thing ever is, and I've got where I hate doing it because it happens every time. Yeah. Buying milk. <laughs> yeah. No matter what store I go to, whenever I have, I took more selfies with a jug of milk in my hand <laughs> than, than I think probably anybody on the planet. Apparently, dairy departments all over mm-hmm. in Wiki fans. Really? I go to Walmart or a grocery store, a gas station. Whenever I have a gallon of milk, that's when they come out. You should just carry it with you at all times, I think, just like as a built man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you got a new got a new career there, I think. <laughs> well, I used yeah. to I, I too used to work at a dealership, although I was not a salesperson. And um uh, and I'm sure you had the same experience where um dealerships are full of characters. There's tons of them. And the most common character, at least that we ran into, was the uh the uh I don't know if he was a junkie or a guy who was just jonesing for his next fix, but uh, would go into selling, go into What's the difference. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, who, 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 who's to say about recreational here and there things, but um, the, the guy who would go into sell cars, he'd get his first paycheck and then you wouldn't see him for a week. You know, he'd sell <laughs> one car, get his commission gone. I mean, that guy was gone. And uh, I think that happened about four or five times in my brief little stint working for a dealership, but what did you do at the dealership? So I was in graduate school at the time and, uh, I needed a part-time job. I was uh, previous, I was a manager of an auto parts store and, uh, it didn't, it didn't go well. I hated it. And I was in graduate school and you can't work 60 hours and go to graduate. School. It just, it just wasn't working. So we parted ways. Um, not amicably, but we parted ways. So I went and found a job for about like eight bucks an hour as uh, the local dealership, uh, Chevy dealership, as a uh, kind of gopher of sorts. So I would, you know, I would wash and detail cars and then kind of whatever they needed. They needed some, uh, a car, they lost the keys for a car, so they needed to slim Jim it. Oh, Eric will do it. He seems like the hood rat type. So give him the, <laughs> the slim he Jim. He all kinds of things. Oh, B and E, Eric. Yeah, exactly. Well, here, here's the funny thing, here, and, and I'm sitting right next to it right here, is one of my new hobbies is learning how to lock pick. So this is a clear lock, and I'm learning how to pick locks. So 
Doesn't well, make me feel better about you coming to Greenville. <laughs> well, if we shake hands, just count your fingers when we're done, okay? Exactly. So we had a cast of characters though, and I was sitting and uh, I was sitting there, and in my off time, uh, sitting at the dealership, when I had nothing to do. I would read uh, either my textbooks for school, or I was big into philosophy at the time, so I'd read something ten ten levels above my head. I couldn't understand it. And uh, this guy comes up to me, and let me let me describe Kirby. This is, his name is Kirby. He's since passed away. He was like sixty eight when I met him. He was 6'4", 80 pounds soaking wet, just a bean pole. Cowboy, big cowboy hat, blouse, cowboy blouse with the boldest tie, big belt buckle, skinny jeans, and the, the you know, the very skinny warm. Jeans before they were cool. Cowboy skinny jeans, yeah, like, like that sort of deal. And he had the boots that were very worn, but very, you could tell, very expensive, uh, you know, rattleskin or whatever they were, boots. And he looks at me and he's, he's kind of got this look on his face and I look at him and, and I, and I, the first thing I said to him was, I bet you enjoy wearing that outfit, no matter what anybody thinks of you. And he says, that's right. I would wear this on any given day. I don't care what the fashion is. And then I looked at him, I said, what the hell are you doing here? You seem way more educated and way more kind of with it than your average car guy and he was not the smarmy type he was the pre he was the straight shooter and he said eric i'm gonna tell you a little something uh he goes this story starts with the phrase i i believe you should talk to jesus before you meet him and i said okay where's this going he said well and he had all sorts of crazy stories but he says eric i i have lymph i have uh, lymph node cancer and i was given three months to live and I'm on year three. And so I'm living on borrowed time. And I didn't think I was going to live this long. So I spent my entire, you know, savings, which was considerable, apparently. And uh, he says, I, I barely finished the sixth grade, but he was the most eloquent, most well-spoken, most intelligent person I'd ever meet. It was the weirdest, like, what the hell are you doing selling used cars? You know, it was just at a dealership of all, you know, it just made no sense. And he says, well, Eric, I just need a couple bucks to kind of get me by. And um, one of my things that I did before I, uh, be, be, one of the things I wanted to do is I went to Mexico, Eric. Now imagine skinny guy, big, you know, the big glasses, the old, old man glasses, mm -hmm. real skinny, super nice. I'm mean, like the most well-read, most intelligent person I've ever met. Sixth grade educated. He says to me, I went to Mexico, Eric. And at the bottom of that hill, or there was a hill, there's a large hill in front of me. And at the bottom of that hill, Eric, was a man. And that man was selling peyote. Now, I took that peyote and I started walking up that hill. And I am not a religious man. I do not necessarily believe in God. But I tell you, Jesus is real. I met him and he is at the top of that mountain. I suggest you talk to him before you beat him. <laughs> And, and that is kind of how all of our conversations went, every single one. And he also smoked uh, Marlboro Reds, too. And I asked him, I said, I said, uh, you know, should you really be smoking those, Kirby, at your age? He goes, Eric, I got stage four lymph node cancer. You think I give a damn? And, at this point, does it really matter? Enjoy yourself. Yeah, I'm like, I went, fair enough. He goes, I, I said, you know, whatever. And this is the kind of guy that would go to a restaurant and, you know, we would, you know, the the – the little, the, uh, whoever it was, the, uh, not your waitress, but the person who goes and sit, seats you, the hostess. the hostess, thank you. She, uh, he would give her a tip. And I looked at him, I said, what, you know, you don't have to do that. It's kind of not the thing. And he goes, I know, but imagine how great her day will be after, after, uh, to, after that. And I went, that's a very good point. And I want to tell you something. My mother got me in the habit of doing this. And this is something my mom does. Mm -hmm. She'll go Starbucks or, you know, a fast food place. If she sees, like, a mom with kids behind her, mm -hmm. she'll pay for the food behind her. Oh, yeah. I've heard of that. That's nice. And, you know, or, or a cup of coffee or, or whatever. And, um, and, you know, she got me started doing that. You got to think about that. One little thing and totally changed somebody's day. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's just like you get a waitress with extremely good service, sure. you know, that, that you just, you just like, or they're just, and I mean, when I say like, I ain't like trying to say hit on, but like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, just people. And, and you know a good person when you meet them. A genuinely you know? good person, yeah. Yeah, you know, and then those are the people that you want to see get ahead. You want to see them smile. So, you know what? What's 20 bucks at the end of the day? I mean, it's not, it's not going to make or break anything you're doing at the time, but it'll make their night, you know? Yeah. Or, or or just, you know, whatever. And so I totally see that. Right. Is So uh, is your mom still around then? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, okay. My mother, my mother is very much alive and well and chews my ass on a daily basis. Well, good, because my mom today was having me uh, do all sorts of chores at her house because she fell off the damn ladder, and now I feel, uh, guilt. now I feel well, guilty. So that's how moms work, is with the guilt trip. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it works. That's, that's, how, that's how they work. They get you with the guilt trip. It um, works. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know if you drew this from me or not. I, I love to work. I do. Okay. I really do. Yep. Putting in hours is, is nothing for me. I mean, I'll probably work 80 hours a week now. Okay. But there's certain types of work that I won't do. Yep. Not that I'm too good to do it. I just refuse to do it. Sure. Because I'm, the way I think about it, I can make more money doing something else than wasting my time doing this. Right. So I'll pay someone to do it. That does it all the time. It's not that big a deal. For I hate cutting grass. I'd rather take an ass whipping than cut grass. <laughs> my, my dad made me cut grass as a kid. And I told, I mean, the things I said about my father under my breath pushing a damn lawnmower. Mm -hmm. you know, they just like, I mean, literally, I would probably wrote, I would probably push it over the top of his body if I could have got away with it. Yeah. I was so mad, spitting that. I will never cut grass. I have lived, I've owned three homes from 20 to now. Okay. I've never cut grass once in my life. Wow. I did it today. What now? I did it today. Yeah. I hate cutting grass. I hate, it messes with my sinuses. It just, I hate it in every sense of, <laughs> and I feel like my dad when I say that. Yeah. Oh, I just can't live with myself. But I hate cutting grass. All right. I got a buddy that cuts grass. He loves it. Knock yourself out. Sure. And, um, you know, if you've got a car problem, you come see me, you know, or, you know, back, I owned a sign shop several years ago and a good friend I did stand up comedy with, he's the one that broke me though. Um, I did stand up comedy with a good friend of mine. He started a landscaping company. Okay. Well, he didn't really have the money to letter up his trucks and his trailers like they wanted to be. Well, I own a sign shop. I'll make you a deal. I never cut go. grass. I'll keep you lettered up. How about that? That's good so news. as this company grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and I never cut grass. I never did. He basically followed me everywhere I went after that. And, uh, to this day, he still owns that landscaping company. And I still, I don't letter his trucks anymore, but he still cuts my grass for me. Like <laughs> nice. he feels like he's obligated. And, uh, nice. that's one of the good friends I've made from stand up comedy. Now, if I could just talk him into going to Seneca and cutting my mom's grass. There you go. Yeah. So anyway, so mom calls me and she goes, Hey, I want to dig up some bushes. Oh, yeah. No, I don't do landscaping. I don't. Yeah, nope. I'll, nope. I'll tell you something. Nope. You see, nope. you see my hands? No manual labor. I don't do that. Very soft. I can tell. <laughs> yes. Baby soft. Baby soft. And, and you, know, you, know the reason, you know the reason they're like that? Because I don't do shit like that. <laughs> and, and, you know, this digging up bushes. I'm going to tell you something. The only, if you see me with a shovel in my hand. Mm-hmm. Just don't call the cops. I'm buried inside. Okay. Right. You know I'll, I mean? I'll stop and help you. You know what I mean? Exactly. I appreciate <laughs> it. You know my hands. So, but you see what I'm getting at. So if you see a shovel in my hand, something shady went down. Well, and that, that's what and, my wife and, says. And, you know, I'm not digging up any rock woods. Yeah. Well, that's what my wife says. My wife what says else? my wife says, if you ever see her mowing the lawn or shoveling the driveway. Either I'm, div I'm, we're divorced, or I'm dead somewhere, because she refuses to do either of those things. Well, you know, it was funny. One of the buildings I'm looking at, they're pouring fresh concrete. Okay. Yeah. And I was moving around with a guy building, and I said, "Hey, I said before you pour that concrete, I got a couple ex wives I'd love to hide. You don't mind <laughs> me sticking in there when you do that?" <laughs> and it took him a second for him to get it. Yeah. Right. It's one of those moments like maybe he doesn't know my sense of humor. 
Maybe he don't think. Maybe he thinks I'm not quitting. You know, but he called me back on rental app, so I know it must be okay. Yeah, and and when he's like, he gives you the side eye. It's just a test, only a test. Only a test. Wink, wink. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know when to drop them off. I was gonna say, I, I, uh, yeah, I might have a couple of folks who might, uh, who might fit that bill as well. So if you're not done, let me uh, just give me like a week's notice. You know, for, yeah, you know, for, just a little time. If you need some filler, I'll, uh, I'll help Turn you out. back for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So well, yeah, um, you know, it's, it's. I know it's probably hard to believe, but I may have. I may have pissed a person or two off in my day. Really? I that Yeah, I know. It's, I know it's hard to believe. I'm speechless because I'm I know it's hard to wrap your mind around. I don't even know how to even respond to that with um you, you got to <laughs> there's there's got to be at least one good story there. Well, there's several good stories there, huh? <laughs> I tell you one, you know, we're talking about working at a dealership, though. You're talking about all the people, before we get too far away from that, talking yeah. about working at a dealership. There's always that one girl that has dated everybody in the dealership. I Thankfully, I was in the shop, and no girls wanted to date anybody in the shop. So I never got I was I, privy I to that. Every, every dealership I've ever worked in, including the CarMaxes, they always had that one chick, usually worked in the business office, that dated everybody there. All right. And by date, we're using that term extremely loose. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah. yeah I, 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 I can follow you. Yes, I'm following. <laughs> wink, wink. Ah. <laughs> everybody, but it's so funny. It's just those types of people. Or sure. you get the one guy that's like the, the, uh, like the RoboCop of ours. Oh, yep. Like he gets like sixty, like six thousand hours a week in the shop, and like freaks out when a service rider like double books him or doesn't sell a job. We had this one guy. He looked a lot like uh, uh, um, Austin was his last name, the wrestler. Um, Steve Austin. There you go, him. And shaved head worked out all the time and he yep. used to freak out and like we had this service rider his name was mickey and he had yellow eyes i don't know if he was drinking urine or what but his eyes were yellow yeah john does. and uh, it wasn't healthy whatever it was i'm sure yeah. and he looked stressed out he had this gray wiry hair and and you know and he come in mickey you didn't sell that brake job well <laughs> they said they want to wait he would grab the ro out of his hand walk to the waiting room where's smith <laughs> oh no <laughs> and he'd sit down in front of him and wait he said those brake pads are about 85 percent they really need to be replaced like he would sell it his self <laughs> like i'm gonna whip your ass if you don't buy the brakes yeah and and the reason being is because he's already got tore down and the rotor's on the lathe you know he was right that guy. yep and uh it was insane so like every dealership's got that guy Oh yeah, it will. And there's always uh, my favorite was apathy guy. So the guy who he gives no shits that he works there, and he gives no craps the jobs he get, and he's just this place sucks. I hate being here. Dealerships all suck. Uh, I don't even know why I'm here. He's there on Saturday. He was always the guy who gets scheduled Saturdays. And uh, there was one guy I can't remember his name, but he put like a Grand Am on Grand Am the two door version. This is a couple years ago up on a lift. And it just crunched the crap out of the rocker panel, smashed it. And I said, um, uh, is that the correct jacking point for that? I'm not trying to do, tell you how to do your job, but um, you're smashing the living shit out of that rocker panel. He goes, he looks at me and goes, I don't give a shit, man. I'm just going to okay. do my job. And he walks away. I'm like, all right, well, you know, I who said. Who am I to question this? Who am I? You know, again, I'm just here part time. Washing cars, man. You know, I uh, I'm, I ain't here. I ain't here to piss anybody off. <laughs> well, and, and that's dealership life. Like you're just kind of like floating along. Yeah. Trying to get something done. Yep. It was it was hilarious. Um, CarMax was a lot like that. You had all these different different types. Mm -hmm. Like we had the guy that had the big toolbox out in the shop. Oh, the fifty thousand dollar toolbox. Yeah, I know that guy. And the guy that can't fix anything, but he has a tool for everything. Right. Yeah. 
It's yeah. always a part problem, never his problem. Right. Misdiagnosed everything. Yep. And then the guy beside him, and this is a true story, brought a five gallon pail with his tools in it. Oh, yeah. He had, it in his bag. he had no toolbox. And this was the guy next to him. Right. He could fix damn near anything. I know that guy. I had several. I, uh, I used to work for a repair shop and I had that guy and he had that old school craftsman uh, box from like the 70s, right? Uh, back when they were that weird red color, not the new bright red, but that weird dingy red. Yeah. And, and it was just a four tray box and that was it. And this guy made way more than anybody in the shop because of uh, his the hours he was uh, uh, f- uh, flagging. But that dude could fix damn near anything just by looking at it and kind of wiggling a couple wires. He would just kind of go, hmm, all right, well, you got a broken wire here in uh, this main harness over here. And I mean, like, like, how the hell did you know that? Well, I don't know, I've seen 50 of them. That's how you do it. I'm like, okay, well, good for you. you know, I mean, it was that guy. I think, I think every shop has that guy. It is. And then, you know, the thing is, you know, that guy made more money than anybody else because he stayed off the damn tool truck. That's why. <laughs> That's right. He's not, yeah, like the, uh, I have every tool guy who writes uh, 80% of his paycheck to snap on or Matco or whoever, right? Yeah. That, those guys sell their soul. I bought, mm-hmm. I made a, a little side hustle one time. I got hooked up with a snap on dealer. Okay. And I was buying all his repo boxes. Oh, there you go. And then he got to telling his other Snap-on dealer buddies, and I started buying all their repo boxes. Yep. And, you know, at any given time, I had 10 to 12 nice Snap-on boxes of different sizes, shapes, classes, whatever. Right. Um, one of the funniest ones ever, um, if you know anything about Snap-on boxes, their top-of-the-line box is called an Epic. Okay. Um, that's the end-all, be-all of Snap-on toolboxes. Um, and me being a car guy, if you want that cool toolbox, you know, right. and the thing that's crazy is most, the reason I could sell them is I was buying them for pennies on the dollar because they're repos. Right. But, but the trick was how to buy them all good and the bad, the oh, ugly. All. Yep. Okay. But I got a lot, most of them were brand new or months old, you know, not right. old. And um, there was a few that were a little beat up, but the most part they were all nice. And, um, all the crazy colors and whatnot. And what I would do is I would sell them to individuals because they loved them because they couldn't go on a snap and truck because they didn't work in a shop, but they wanted that cool toolbox in their garage. It's yeah, like right. that piece. Mm-hmm. You know, it's full of Harbor Freight tools, but you get that snap on box. And it I looks good. Sell, I used to sell the hell out of them. And they were great trading stock on cars. You know, if we couldn't put a deal together, hell, I'll tell you what, I'll throw that little yellow classic 96 box in. Nice. You know, and that was like, that was always my trading stock, you know? That's actually a pretty good uh, sales pitch, actually. Oh, yeah. So that helps keep the deal rolling. Yeah. Um, throw, throw a little extra there for them. Oh, exactly. Well, the thing is, I got 300 bucks in it, but if they had to go <laughs> buy it, it cost them 3500 So, yep. you know what I mean? It's a big deal to them. Right. And yellow wasn't moving too fast, so we sold it. You know, we put it with the car. <laughs> Nobody wants um, the yellow one, right? <laughs> nobody wants the yellow box. <laughs> so anyway, um, I love white toolboxes. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm not a mechanic, but I love white toolboxes. I think they look cool. Yeah, and, I like them. I like them too. And uh, so uh, my step on dealer called me up and he said, Man, I got one of the most gorgeous boxes you've ever seen in your life. And uh, he said, This one you're not going to steal. He said, This one I'll sell it again. And he said, But it's going to be right up your alley. It was a snap on epic. Yep. White. The longest bottom cabinet they made, stainless top, USB ports, microwave, refrigerator, it had everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, had one half bass. It was great. <laughs> and a uh, nice deck off the back, you know. A nice ver- view from the veranda. Yeah. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you know central heat and air, the whole shooting match. Right. And uh, gas logs. But um, <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a cocaine white, you know. Yep. Stainless top. And this is a twelve thousand five hundred dollar toolbox. Oh yeah, and it was perfect. It's got plastic in the shelves. Nice. And I told him, "Who the hell buys this and keeps it two months and lets it go back?" He must have made a horrible move. He said, "A guy changing oil at the local Honda dealership did." Oh, a good technician. 
Bless his heart. Uh, That's predatory right there. Who in their right mind would sell a guy that changes oil for a living a twelve thousand five hundred dollar toolbox? He needs four wrenches and uh, a guy a that makes wrench. sixteen thousand five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> if he's good. Uh I mean, like, literally, that's predatory lending is all that is. I mean, it's like the devil. Who sold you that, Satan? Well, you know? well not but, only uh, that, but doesn't the salesman get a hit for returns and stuff like that? I mean, they that's, do. that's bad. So this, box, yeah. so this box came in. I had a, K, I had a, I had a KLR black box okay. that I liked, stainless yeah. steel, all this stuff. And me and my Snap-on guy were trading, joking around. And I'm, I'm a wheeler dealer. I love to deal and, and all that stuff. And he wouldn't sell me this box like the ones in the warehouse that all the repos were in. This was special. Of course. So I had this KLR box. He liked it. And I said, how would you trade on the KLR box? He goes, I, we ended up, we got within $2,500. Okay. Yeah. Me had to throw a little boot in to buy this $12,000 box. My box was probably a $5,000 box. Okay. So it was a deal. Yeah. So I don't know if I can do that or not. Okay. Well, I noticed him walking around his truck. You know, the step on has promotions and things like that. Yep. And uh, and he said, I said, so this box isn't listed as a repo. He said, no, I ain't even been. I, I literally, he, he gave it back. You know, I took it back. Yeah. You know, you know that's the reason I'm getting sold with all the other repo boxes and things like that. And uh, he goes, and I noticed there was a sign hanging up inside the, the little truck. With the air running. Yep. It says finance any snap on product over $1,000 and get a free GoPro Hero 4. This is back when those were new. Yep. If you finance it. So that gave me a goal. <laughs> yeah. So I just looked back at him and said, listen, I'll do a thousand bucks to in your box of mine. And I said, it's a white toolbox. Or you can sit here and look at it. He said, I can't take that. Good enough. I walk off the truck. It's fine. Two days later, he said, a thousand bucks still stand. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. I said, bring my box to me. So he goes pulling up in his tool truck and he goes, all right. He said, he said, he said, you write me a check today. And I said, I want to finance it. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a hero for, I paid it off the next week. <laughs> this is you asshole. I said, <laughs> You want to sell it or not? Yeah, you want a deal or not? <laughs> so it worked out, and, I, and then the next week I paid it off, which made it even worse. He, I was all kinds of son of a bitch writing that. Show. Oh yeah, exactly. I don't mind paying. I I don't mind doing that uh, every once in a while. But it, yeah, if I run into the guy every once in a while, that's uh, I, you got more guts than I do. I'll give you that. <laughs> you know what? What they're gonna do? You're selling. You know how many things people said to me over the years selling. That, that I would never say to someone. Yeah. So, you know what? I've got the money. I'm going to give a shot anyway. You know? Yeah. All they can do is tell you no. I've never had nobody tell me, I'm not going to sell you that because of your offer. It's funny. I'm buying a house. Well, it's funny. You, speaking of moms, my mom has always told me, he says, Eric, what's the worst they're ever going to tell you? No. So go ahead and ask the question. Go ahead and see if they'll do the deal or whatever, you know? So, you know, it's kind of weird. Uh, the uh, kind of full circle nature, you know, the, uh, the conversation here. So it's, you know, see my mom, speaking of most, my mom, my mom's a shrewd negotiator. Okay. I put my mom and Ed, they're fierce. Okay. My mom, my mom will wheel or deal you to death. Like I got a little bit of a heart. I love, I love the Jew just most of the next guy. Yep. I love the barber. But my mom, I mean, she will cut you to the bone. <laughs> anything. She's yeah. she's something else. Like I I like to think I get some of my negotiating skills from her because she's she's hardcore. Yeah. From way back. Oh the old yeah, old school days. The you old, know you know, Rob, um the this is I, I know you're you're a busy guy. And I want to respect your time, and I want to say thank you for coming on. I probably probably should kind of trail off here as we 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 look at time. And sounds, you, it, sounds, it sounds good. I'm at 13 missed calls right now. 
Exactly. So I, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to say thanks a lot for, for coming on. I really do appreciate your time. This took a while to kind of set up. Again, you're kind of constantly uh, moving and, and uh, doing some pretty, pretty kick-ass things. So uh, I, 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 I thank you. It was nice to sit down. Yeah. Just chill out for a minute. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you had a good time and um, you still owe me that pool game. I will come to, I, I will come to South Carolina. I, I promise it's uh it's kind of on my list of places that I need to revisit for work. So I'll be there. I'll make sure to maybe come in a day early or something. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm actually uh, flying out here next month. I'll be in South Bend, Indiana for a little okay. while. Sure. I got, I got, I'm bouncing all the places and I've got Vegas back to back. Okay. Charlotte, all over the place. Well, but definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. I owe you a pool game. We yeah, got some really good pool halls down here too. All right. Fair enough. So, uh, and if you're ever in Minnesota, you know, you know where to find me, you got a place to stay, no problem. And, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll set you up on the, on the good couch. How about that? Oh, the good couch. <laughs> we got the corduroy pillows that leave the marks. Uh, uh, no, well, just the button, the big button. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a gunshot wound to the face. Exactly. I branded you in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know? I love it. Uh, love hey, it. Th thanks, man. I appreciate it. Take care, sir. Thank you for having me on.